Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss seven things to know about naltrexone. Naltrexone is one of the medication which can be used for the treatment of chronic alcoholism. It can also be used for the treatment of opioid addiction. So in both of these cases, naltrexone can reverse addiction towards alcohol or opioids. But before taking the naltrexone, you should know important things as what is the effect of this drug on the liver? Who can take this medication? How to reverse the effect of naltrexone under emergency conditions? And what are the toxic effects of this medication? What to avoid while using naltrexone? All these things are very important and highly essential. So while using naltrexone, you should know all these things for better management and safe treatment with naltrexone. So today in this video, we are going to discuss seven important things that you should know before using naltrexone. Naltrexone is available in two doses forms. One is a tablet and second one is intramuscular injection. Obviously intramuscular injection should be carefully given because the drug is directly administered into the blood circulation and any excess of this dose may lead to few of the toxic effects. So compared with oral tablet, intramuscular injection should be carefully given. But even with use of oral tablet, we have to know few of the important things. So let us start our discussion one by one. The first one is the effect on liver. Many of the medications are metabolized within the liver. Similarly, naltrexone tablets can also be metabolized within the liver. Due to its metabolism in the liver, they can be released as metabolites. These metabolites are maybe either active or inactive. And one of its active metabolite is the 6-beta naltrexol. So both naltrexone is active as well as its metabolite 6-beta naltrexol is also active. Under normal conditions when we are using at regular doses such as 50 mg of naltrexone, both of these components are not producing any significant effect on the liver. But when we are using at higher doses such as 300 mg which is a toxic dose, in such conditions both naltrexone as well as its metabolite can produce some hepatotoxicity resulting in hepatocellular injury. So you have to carefully observe that any symptoms like abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, yellowish of skin as well as eye, unexpected loss of appetite and some joint pains, all these may indicate the development of acute hepatitis in the people. So while using naltrexone for longer periods, if these symptoms are developed, then liver functionality should be carefully monitored and any development of acute hepatitis should be thoroughly checked. So this is the first important precaution while you are taking naltrexone. That's why it is always better to use the naltrexone at lower doses in order to avoid any damage to the liver. Now let us go to the second one, opioid free period. Naltrexone is given to the people who are free from opioids because naltrexone is having an inhibitory effect on opioids. Opioids like morphine, buprenorphine can be used as analgesics. And in those people who are using opioids, naltrexone should not be given because it can precipitate withdrawal symptoms. Since naltrexone acts as an antagonist on the opioids, in presence of naltrexone, opioids produce opposite effect resulting in withdrawal symptoms. That's why at least 7 to 10 days gap should be maintained between withdrawal of opioids and introduction of naltrexone. That's why before using naltrexone, a naloxone challenge test is done in order to assess the presence of opioids in the body to avoid the risk of withdrawal symptoms. Similarly, urine test can also be done in order to check the presence of opioids. And when it is confirmed that the patient is free of opioids, then naltrexone can be administered. Without this precaution, use of naltrexone may lead to development of withdrawal symptoms. Next one, common side effects. Naltrexone can have some inhibitory effect on the CNS. So it can produce some dizziness, sleepiness, sedation and headache in the people. These are the common side effects of naltrexone which are well tolerated. But if you observe any severe dizziness and sedation, it may indicate any interaction of naltrexone with other centrally depressant drugs. Fourth one, opioid tolerance. Naltrexone can be used to treat opioid addiction. So in those people who are addicted to opioids, naltrexone can be given to produce 
opposite effects. So it is an antagonist of opioids. That's why it can be used for the treatment of opioid addiction. So while using naltrexone, we can observe some inhibitory effect on opioids. However, at the end of dosing interval, we can find the loss of naltrexone activity, which results in the reduced opioid tolerance. Because of reduced opioid tolerance, even a small dose of opioids can produce an effect which is equal to a high dose of opioids. So even with a small dose of opioid, a large effect can be observed because of reduced opioid tolerance, which is clearly observed at the absence of naltrexone activity. For instance, at the end of dosing interval of naltrexone, the action of naltrexone is reduced, which increase the opioid activity and reduce the opioid tolerance. So even a small dose of opioid can produce a large systemic effects. This effect can also be observed in case of missed dose of naltrexone in such conditions in the absence of naltrexone, we can observe an enhanced effect of opioids. So this may lead to opioid intoxication that can produce a variety of systemic complications. So in such conditions, few symptoms like confusion, decreased alertness and awareness, difficulty breathing because of respiratory depression, nausea and vomiting and excessive sleepiness can be observed with reduced opioid tolerance. That's why at the end of naltrexone treatment, opioids should not be used at regular dose, but they should be used at lower doses in order to avoid opioid intoxication. Fifth one, use of analgesics. In few of the emergency conditions, it is required that naltrexone treatment should be reversed in order to produce analgesic activity of opioids. So for the pain management, opioids are required and opioids will not act in presence of naltrexone. So under emergency conditions where pain management is essential, naltrexone activity should be reversed. In such conditions, we cannot admit the opioids directly for pain management because in presence of naltrexone, opioids are ineffective. So in order to reverse the action of naltrexone and for the pain management, regional analgesia is preferred by administration of local anesthetics and use of non-opioid analgesics are preferred. In this way, we can reverse the effect of naltrexone and pain can be managed properly. But in those people who are unable to control the pain with these two ways, opioids should be administered under very close monitoring by a professional to produce the pain management without any adverse effects with naltrexone. Sixth one is the opioid withdrawal symptoms. We have seen that naltrexone can inhibit the opioid activity. So at higher doses, naltrexone can precipitate opioid withdrawal symptoms. So this may lead to development of nervousness in the people, agitation, palpitations, increased heartbeat along with some awareness of heartbeat and even tremor can be observed in the people. These are few of the opioid withdrawal symptoms that can be observed with higher dose of naltrexone. Seventh one, switching from opioid agonies. For the treatment of opioid dependence, we can give few of the drugs which are having the weak opioid activity. So in order to maintain the opioid dependence, generally few of the drugs like methadone and buprenorphine are given, which are weak opioid agonies and they are somewhat long acting. So they can produce opioid activity without producing significant euphoria and respiratory depression. So these two drugs are the opioid agonies which are used for opioid dependence. On the other hand, naltrexone can be used for the management of opioid addiction where it acts as an antagonist and it inhibits the activity of opioids. So here both of these clinical indications are completely different. That's why naltrexone should not be combined with opioid agonists like methadone and buprenorphine because it can produce withdrawal symptoms when it is combined with these two agents. So this is very essential before using naltrexone, the patient should be free of opioids. At least seven to 10 days gap should be there and the patient should have a successful naloxone challenge test and urine test. And even the administration of weak opioid agonists like methadone and buprenorphine are also not preferred in presence of naltrexone because naltrexone can precipitate withdrawal symptoms when it is given along with opioids. So these are the seven important things that we should know before using naltrexone.
So that's all for today. Hope this video is useful to you. Please post your comments and opinions in the comment box. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.